Hello everyone, we're group 3, the Powerpuff Girls, Elena Kim, Anushila, and Tanya Carter. We will be talking about two algorithms, which will be k-nearest neighbors, which is the KNN algorithm, and the stochastic gradient descent, which is the SGD algorithm. Let's first talk about k-nearest neighbor algorithm. So KN is a simple versatile algorithm that solves all available cases and predict the numerical target based on similarity measures. So I mean by the case, a case is classified by a major vote of its neighbor, but the case being assigned to the class most common amongst its K neighbor measured by a distant function. So let's say uh, if K is equal to 1, then the case is simple assigned to the class of its nearest neighbor. Now let's look at the step in the KNN algorithm. So first, we, we have a variable k with this. You assign k a value from 1 to the total number of example. The best value to the choice for k is the low odd number. Uh, second, with this value of k, we look at the k closest points from the graph from the location of new example point. Now, uh, the next part is to assign the new point a class, the class type will be determined by determined from the majority of its closest points. Uh, there's two approaches in KNN algorithms. Uh, the first one will be regression, is calculating average of a k nearest neighbor, and second one will be classification, distance weight average of a k nearest neighbor. Uh, the good thing about KNN algorithm is it can be applied to the data from any dispersion. So for example, uh, data does not have to be separable with linear boundaries. Uh, it's very simple and intuitive algorithm. Uh, it's also good classification if the number of sample is large enough. Uh, the bad thing about KNN algorithm, uh, choosing key may be tricky. Um, the test state is computationally expensive or so um, need a large number of samples for accuracy. As Elena mentioned that KNN uses two approaches, uh, the KNN regression or KNN uh, classification. Both of uh, these approaches use the Euclidean distance formula uh, to calculate the distance uh, between uh, the points to find the nearest neighbor. So what the uh, distance uh, formula uh, does is that if we have too many points, uh, it will take the square root of some of all these points or examples and then figure out the distance between the points and uh, to the, uh, or the nearest neighbor. Uh, for example, if we uh, go on uh, to the example I have here about the, um, we, um, we have a data set with uh, two features, age and loan, and then we have a value to predict, and that's the house price index here with a question mark. Uh, our new value or point is that 48, here are the age of 48, and all other instances in this uh, table or examples that we will be comparing this new point to. So if uh, we are uh, in this example, we are using Euclidean distance to find the distance between our new point and all the other examples, as I mentioned. Uh, so, if we are using the, the uh, Euclidean distance and we assign k equal to one to find the nearest neighbor, in this case, uh, we are um, uh, the nearest neighbor is the last case in the training set with the house price index to uh, 64 because it has the minimum uh, distance, which is 8,000 uh, uh, in this case, and that. Will be the first point to compare so if we uh, let's go ahead and um, uh, put these two points in our Euclidean distance uh, formula to figure out uh, what is the distance we get mm, so if we plot the points uh, for example here um, distance is equal to the square root of uh, 48 minus 33 square root plus uh, the two loans a square root and then we get the distance equal to 8,000 which is exactly the same distance here in our table which is 8,000 so um, uh, if we now uh, assign k value u equals to 3. So in this case, we are looking for three minimum values to compare with our new point. Uh, the three uh, minimum values first was 8,000. So now we, if we look in this uh, distance table and see what is the uh, second minimum value, that will be 22,000, which uh, I have put uh, two uh, next to it in red. And then the third value will be uh, 42,000 which is the third minimum value. So uh, we, uh, if we are trying to uh, uh, 
figure out the value of the this new uh, HPI for the uh, new uh, point, uh, the value that we are looking for, we take uh, some of all these three minimum uh, values and then we are dividing it by three to find out the new point. And in this case, it's giving us 180.7, which will be the value of this new point. Um, and um, that's uh, how the distance is now uh, measured by uh, um, comparing the two values and uh, the nearest neighbors. So um, go ahead and then uh, we will talk about uh, the k nearest neighbor uh, in um, more simplified uh, words. Uh, for example, here we have another example for the k nearest neighbor where uh, we have uh, two class of fish and sharks uh, uh, classified by the lightness and uh, length. Now, if we assign k equal to 3, and we have to classify what the point there is. We see that uh, we get two sharks and one fish, which the point now is classified as shark because the majority of the um, uh, majority uh, here is shark, not the fish. So that's how it's classified as a shark. And uh, now, second example, if we see, we have um, uh, how do we classify uh, the nearest neighbor if we have multiple classes? Uh, with the same example, now we have three classes. We have fishes, uh, sharks, and the seahorse. So if we classify k uh, value equal to five, then we are looking at two, um, uh, we are looking into five values or five neighbors nearest to the point. And uh, in this case, we see that we have three sharks and one seahorse with one fish, which are the five um, neighbors uh, that are closest to the point we are uh, trying to classify. So in this case, majority of both goes to the shark uh, class, which is uh, close to the point. So this point is now classified as sharks. Uh, I hope that uh, made the KNN um, uh, simplifier uh, simplify for you. Uh, so now uh, let's talk about the next algorithm that we will be uh, talking about, um, SGD. So Elena will talk about that. Okay, uh, let's talk about stochastic gradient descent. Uh, SGD is a modification to the basic gradient descent algorithm. It allows us to scale algorithms to much bigger training scales. S it performs one update at a time, therefore it's much faster. Uh, fundamentally a bad optimizer and is the only one that are fast enough. SGD performs a parameter update for each training example x and not y. Good thing about SGD algorithms is, is efficient and is easy of implementation. Um, the bad thing about HGD algorithms is um, it requires a number of hyperparameters such as the regularization parameters and the number of iterations. HGD is sensitive to feature scalings. And further in detail about SGD, um, one of the basic uh, gradient descents used is the batch gradient uh, descent, which is normally used on small data set. Um, however, stochastic data, uh, gradient descent is normally used on large data set since uh, interrupting the algorithm periodically is not efficient. Batch gradient descent computes the gradient using the whole data set, while uh, SGD computes the gradient set using the single sample. When you have small data sets, you can compute the sum efficiently. If you look at the cost function, uh, the cost function will be explained later on, which, uh, which includes the summation formula. Summation is very efficient if you're using on small sets of data. However, if it is a large um, set of data, then it will be time consuming and expensive to implement. And uh, one of the goal for using a uh, stochastic gradient descent is to start making progress even after one single example or iteration. And stochastic gradient descent does not scan through the entire training set, which makes it even more efficient. To compute the loss for small portions of data, we have to calculate the derivative, and that will lead towards the next uh, point we should plot on the graph. Computing small portions of data is more efficient and economically feasible. To check convergence, compute the cost function first, and usually it's done before updating the theta, and implement iterations for every thousand or so iterations, and we will need to plot these costs computed from the previous step. 
this is just an example of uh, how um, SGD is in um, relation to linear or batch gradient scripting. In batch gradient scripting, they will be um, one point after another in order to get to the global minimum, and it may as well get to the exact global minimum point. However, with SGD, it will always be um, moving towards the global minimum. However, it may not always reach the global minimum. Um, SGD converging to the global minimum, the parameters will get very close, but may not reach it once again. The more iterations we do, the more accurate the conversions might be. The less iterations are more vague. This is a pseudocode that we will be using for the SGD. Um, it starts off with randomly shuffling the data set, and um, the main part of the SGD is the nested loops. So uh, this will be the cost function, which will be updated for every thousand or so values. So if we were to start from this position, let's say, um, how SGD would work is that it will calculate a uh, uh, a small set of data and the next point will probably may end up here so it will go towards the next towards the global minimum however there are times when it may give a wrong um, direction that it should go towards let's say it goes to this direction next however towards the end it will always move towards the minimum but it may not always reach the global minimum it will always so if you look at this example, uh, instead of computing loss, it's computing estimate, and instead of using all the data, it's using tiny random sample of training data, as Anna said. Picking random sample is very important. If it's not random enough, then it's not going to work. Uh, taking very small steps each time is cheaper to compute. As uh, we saw in the example in the previous slide, it is going towards the global minimum. It may lead to the wrong direction at times, but towards the end, it will always surround by the global minimum point. Um, thank you for watching us. Uh, do you guys have any questions? We're open to the questions. Please go Questions, ahead. please. <laughs>